everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Chris. I'm a junior doctor currently working in the UK. As you are well aware, I haven't been posting any videos recently, but that's because uh, I've been quite busy at work. Hopefully, I will get into the habit of posting a video a week on common topics and uh, that are interesting. So today in this video, I'm going to talk about acne vulgaris, also known as pimples, red spots, and this commonly affects um, almost everyone in their teenage years. This is a very common skin condition that is a result of blocked skin pores, uh, causing a buildup of oil, also known as sebum, as well as dead skin cells. The accumulation of dead skin cells alongside with oil can lead to inflammation, uh, causing what we call um, red, angry looking spots um, known as acne vulgaris. So there are many factors causing the inflammation and they are a combination of one, um, excess oil or sebum production by overactive uh, oil glands. Number two, you get a buildup of dead skin cells and this is also known as hyperkeratinization. Three, the presence of a bacteria called Propionibacterium bacterium acnes. So this is a bacteria that commonly reside on our skin. It doesn't really cause much problems, but in acne prone people, the buildup of oil and dead skin cells actually cause the bacteria to multiply, causing more inflammation and leading to red spots. How do you treat or manage acne? Where I work in the UK, we have the NHS. Uh, also known as National Health Service. And in NHS, we have a stepwise approach when treating acne, which I'm going to share with you today. So for patients with mild to moderate uh, acne, um, we normally prescribe topical preparations containing things like benzoyl peroxide, uh, topical retinoids and topical antibiotics. And here are some of the examples that we can prescribe under the NHS. So we get Epidual gel, which is a combination of adapalene and benzoyl peroxide, Duac gel, clindamycin and uh, benzoyl peroxide. And clindamycin is a type of antibiotic. Uh, Traclin gel, which is a combination of topical clindamycin and uh, tretinoin. And that tretinoin is a type of uh, retinoid. Uh, differing, um, it's adapalene, again, it's a type of retinoid. So all these treatments have to be used for several weeks to months before we think of changing them so that we can see if they actually work or not. And if patients are not responding to topical treatments as above, um, we can consider combining systemic or oral form antibiotics with topical steroids such as benzoyl peroxide and topical retinoids. So some of the antibiotics include lamicycline, doxycycline, erythromycin, clarithromycin and trimetoprim. But the first line sort of antibiotic that we normally prescribe in the UK is lamicycline. We prescribe antibiotics not because of the antibacterial effect but for the anti-inflammatory properties that it brings so as to help calm the skin down and to prevent more acne from forming. So again, the antibiotics have to be used for at least three months for us to see if they actually work. And then we can decide whether we want to keep on going with the antibiotics uh, for the anti-inflammatory properties or do we need to stop it and change it to something else. Certain conditions, such as women with uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, sometimes we prescribe the oral contraceptive pill, uh, such as uh, Dianet, which can help uh, to decrease um, testosterone levels and increase estrogen levels. So the last medication that we normally prescribe, and that is usually in the secondary care, which is basically in a hospital setting by a UK GMC licensed uh, dermatologist. And this is um, oral retinoids, also known as isotretinoin and the brand name Roaccutane. And there are certain indications where we prescribe uh, isotretinoin, uh, primarily because it comes with its own risks and side effects. So things that 
would make us think of prescribing um, isotretinoin include a severe acne with scarring and hyperpigmentation, acne that hasn't responded to either topical treatments and the oral antibiotics, uh, acne with uh, major psychosocial impact, so patients get really you know, depressed and have psychiatric issues as a result of acne. So it is important for us to warn patients a few things. Number one, they will need to come to clinic quite frequently for us to assess whether the medication is working. They need to have regular blood tests to check their liver and cholesterol levels. Um, they also need to make sure, for women especially, they need to make sure that they are not pregnant. So they will need to be on at least two forms of contraception. So typically, you know, the berry method as well as the pill to help prevent or reduce the chances of them getting pregnant. So it is also important to take note of the possible side effects, potential complications that come about with taking isotretinoin. So things to be aware of include a dryness of the skin, and that not only includes skin, but also the eyes and mucous membranes. There might be a higher risk of you getting things like nose bleeds, other things would be non-specific muscle aches and pain, hair thinning, initial flare-up of acne within the first two weeks before things get better, uh, photosensitivity of the skin, and this means that the skin might become more sensitive to sunlight. As I've mentioned, isotretinoin can cause problems with the liver and high cholesterol levels. As such, we will need to do regular blood test monitoring. And that's it guys. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you find this useful. Please like, share and comment uh, down below. And if you have any suggestions for future video, do leave a comment down below and I will definitely have a look. See you next time. Bye.